We start with the puzzle. When an elevator is rising with a uniform speed, do you feel a force? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on solving force problems, which will combine the ideas from the previous videos on forces. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You should be able to find the resultant force in the situation and use it to make calculations such as finding the acceleration. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. You will often see the formula F equals MA written this way, with the symbol sigma at the beginning, though this is not what it looks like in the IB data booklet. The sigma shows that this formula applies when all of the forces acting on the body are added together to determine their collective effect. As you may remember from video 2.2b, the method of free body diagrams helps us to identify all of the forces acting on one body. When all the forces on a body are added together, the total force is called the resultant, a single force with the same effect of all the others together. This crate, pulled by a rope, is an example of a body subjected to several forces. You may remember that the method of free body diagrams identifies all the forces acting on the body according to a systematic method. Firstly, weight, which acts downwards from the centre of gravity, then any other action at a distance forces. There are none here. Next, all forces where the object is in contact with other bodies. Here the ground pushes upwards on the crate, and the rope is pulling on the box. There is also the possibility of friction, which will oppose the motion of the crate. So these are the four forces which are acting on the crate. To discover the resultant force acting on the crate, which would have the same effect as all four forces combined, we perform vector addition. The forces are drawn to scale and are now added to each other nose to tail. The order is not important. The resultant will be the same. The resultant will be the vector from the start of the first arrow to the end of the last. This is the resultant force acting on the crate. If we know the mass of the crate, we can calculate its acceleration by rearranging the formula F equals ma. For example, a space shuttle pilot of mass 70 kilograms sitting in a rocket leaving the Earth's atmosphere experiences a vertical acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. What is the force acting on her at this moment? We are assuming that in the Earth's gravitational field, a mass of 1 kilogram experiences a force of 10 newtons, which is an approximation within 2% and is much easier in calculations. Here is the information. Her acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared and her mass is 70 kilograms. The next step is to draw a free body diagram. She experiences her downward weight which, using the formula W equals mg, on Earth is approximately 700 newtons. The upwards force P, due to the push of her seat, is what we need to find. These two, the weight and the contact force, are all the forces acting on her body. Combined, they cause her to accelerate at 2.5 meters per second squared. Here is the calculation. First we calculate the resultant force due to all the forces shown in the diagram. The up direction is positive and the total force is P minus 700 newtons. Then we use the F equals MA formula to equate the resultant force to the mass times acceleration, both of which we know. Here, this is the equation linking all of the information. It contains one unknown P, which we can now find. As you can see, the push of the seat on the pilot is 875 newtons, which rounds to 880 newtons to the two significant figures we are entitled to use with these data. It's a sensible answer, being a quarter greater than her weight, enough to overcome the pull of gravity and to give her an upwards acceleration. First we draw the free body diagram with the weight 6000 newtons downwards and the tension in the elevator cable upwards is T down is 
positive and therefore the resultant force is 6000 minus T and we equate that to 600 times 1.5 F equals MA and the tension is therefore 5100 newtons. The answer is D. Here is the puzzle we set at the beginning. The answer is no. If the elevator is rising with a uniform speed, although it exerts a force on your feet which is equal and opposite to your weight, you will not feel it since the resultant force on you is zero. You will only feel forces in an elevator when it is accelerating, speeding up, slowing down or swaying from side to side. <laughs>